Lost in the morgue. Most of you must disbelieve what I'm gonna tell you, but I still got trembled when recalling this. It was a month ago. You know, there are three people in my family, my father, my mom and me. The only daughter. You might think I must be treated like a princess, but well no, my mom is the princess here, me and my dad always indulge my mom. My mom is a self-love housewife, love cooking and cooks very well. She often buys stuff through the internet. She's living a happy woman and carefree. One month earlier, due to some stomach issues, she needed a few minor surgeries and had to hospitalized in a half month. I was in my summer vacation, and my dad had went away for his business trip, so I had to stay in the hospital all the time to take good care of my mom and hope she was gonna recover soon. Mommy, would you like a banana? She was too boring of being in her sickbed the entire day, I'm not hungry, so not now honey. She said with a deep sigh. The next morning, as usual, I left to buy her breakfast after reminding her, you gotta stay still, or you will get an open incision, mommy, I'll be back in a minute. I walked through the hallway and passed by a small sickbed next to the stair. This is a public hospital, occasionally, patients are outnumbered, so there was some extra beds outside, along the hallway just in case. My gut told me there was something strange with this bed at the first glance, so I came closer and had a look curiously. That was a death body, I thought, an old man whose body had been covered by a white canvas to his face, I was only able to see his forehead and his gray hair. I was just a young girl who have never seen a death body before, so it was a bit terrified. Anyways, I had to get downstairs, so I tried to hold my breath and ran with my head down as quick as I could until I reached the cafeteria. After buying breakfast, I headed back, when passing the dead bed again, I felt like being frozen. I was a bit hesitated, but then I pulled myself together and stepped up. This time, I thought it would be such impolite to an old death man if just walked by like earlier, so I gave him a slight bow and back to my mom's room. I brought my mom breakfast, she was all set to eat. She looked at my pale, tired face, and talked repentantly, Honey, this must be too much for you to take care of me by yourself, you have had enough troublesome lately, I'll promise to give you some extra monthly allowance. I was a bit ashamed, all my fears of the death body had to be displayed all over my face, but I had much more calmed down now, mommy, that's okay, I'm your only dear daughter. That night, my mom asked me, honey, would you mind buying me a container of yogurt? I'd like to grab a bite to eat. The grocery store was at the ground floor, but I had to pass by the dead bed one again, I left unwilling since that was a queen order. I'll buy you one now, mommy. At the room door, I realized there was another stair at the opposite direction, such a relief. I didn't have to pass by the deadline by using this stairway. I stepped towards leisurely. After buying a container of yogurt, I headed back to impatient department right away. While taking the stairway, I saw an old patient just a few steps ahead from me who was walking hardly with his humped back. He was taking step by step very slowly, so I decided to help him out, might I help you? What are you here for at this late? The old man turned around surprisingly once hearing my voice. He squinted his eyes and gave me a slight smile, oh. That's you. That was making me confused. I have tried to recall but I was pretty sure I have never met him before, we know each other? Uncle. He was likely too able to read my mind, come, give me a hand, I need to get over this staircase. That was my initial purpose. He continued, it's quite difficult for me to find room 401, I have to get there, could you help me, my dear? Okay, this is the second floor, 401 is at the fourth floor, I'll lead the way. He had to be an Alzheimer patient here, such a poor old man, I thought. He have probably mistaken me for someone, I focused on helping him to find his room. 
I broke the silence. Why are you here such this late? Where is your child? You should ask your child if you need something. He gave a deep sigh. My son is being too busy to be here with me. Then he looked angry and more emotional suddenly. He gotta be here to pick me up no later than two more days. There was something very strange in his words, but I thought I should stop asking. I reminded him, your family isn't here, so you should stay put. You're not good at memorize things anymore, don't you? I'm afraid if there is something happens to you, your family is gonna worry sick. He didn't reply me back, so we was drowning to the silence while reaching the fourth floor. Right after stepping to the fourth floor, I felt there was a cold breeze blows by and got goosebumps instantly. I thought that might be something wrong with the air conditioner here, since everything was good at the fifth floor where my mom was being. I looked over the floor to search for room 401, it was definitely at the end of the hallway. I pointed out to the old man, your room is at this direction. Next time, remember once you get to the fourth floor, you have to turn left, and just straight, room 401 is the last one. He hold my hand to show his appreciation, my dear, you're such a good girl, thank you. Once he touched my hand, I froze and wondered if his health was too bad to have such a low body temperature. I just needed to take him to his room and back to my mom at the fifth floor. Uncle, I'll take you to your room, we're nearly there. He turned around as an agreement, we walked together in the dark hallway, I felt like I was entering another world. Here it was, room 401 was opening and covering in darkness. Once we were entered to the room, I tried to figure where the switch was to turn the lights on but no ideas, seemed like this room had a different design than the others. I tended to ask the old man, but he seemed so calm, and used to this dark room. I worriedly asked, Uncle, let me turn the light on, the room is so dark, you will easily fall down here. He replied, you have done with helping me, dear. Now you can leave me alone hurriedly, don't bother the others here. I looked around, there was no others in the room, just silence and darkness, who are the others? I see no one, what are you talking about? Somewhat puzzled, then I heard a voice from behind me, Lee, you're back. He whispered to me in an awkward face after hearing that voice, my dear, just listen to me and you are gonna be fine. While I was being unintelligible, a white shining shadow appears next to me. That's a ghost, but the gosh had no sense of my existence yet, just slightly over by me. I was standing unspeakably, that was a middle-aged woman's slight voice behind the old man's back. Lee. You said you went out to look for your son, did you find him yet? Suddenly, she appeared right at the right of the old man. She looked like a normal woman, but there was a huge hole in the middle of her forehead. She slightly sighed and comforted Uncle Lee, you still got luck, you have your son, I don't have anyone to come take my death body home. Then she appeared in front of me and realized my existence, she asked surprisingly, why is there a living human being here? At that moment, I got dizzy like getting a hangover and everything was just spinning around and fading out in front of me. Once I was awakened, I was laying in a sick bed. I tried to sit straight up but still got dizzy and was ready to drop. I realized there was a doctor sitting right next to me. He stopped me to stand up, young lady, I think you're lightly anemic, so you have blacked out earlier, sit still. I have made you a cup of liquid sugar, would you like some? I asked him, Doc, I went to room 401 and, how did I get here? He seemed shirked from my question, you were blacked out because of anemia and exhaustion, you should take a good rest. I am not a patient, I'm not a child neither, but why I couldn't remember what happened in room 401? Could you just tell me what is that place and what have happened to me? The more I tried to remember the more I got dizzy and heavy headache, the doc finally tell me the truth. Alright, alright, listen, you have went to the morgue and blacked out, you must have too much scared. 
He scratched his head regrettably, that was my carelessness, I should pay more attention to that room and did not let you in. Anyways, why didn't you see the morgue sign at the front door? I recalled when I reached the room, it was opening and everything so dark to see, so that was why I didn't notice the sign. He mumbled, such a horrible floor, some doctors had faced ghosts there. He asked me, could you remember what did you saw in there? You have been there for hours, possibly. I helped an old man to get there, he told me that was his room, and his son is gonna pick him up in the next two days probably. The doc stared at me surprisingly, did you mention about Mr. Lee, his death body was sent here yesterday after he got a heart attack. The doc continued, Mr. Lee was living alone by himself, he has a son, a soldier who is guarding at the border area afar. He was unable to be here to hear Lee's dead wish. Then, he asked me one again to stay till until I felt better and back to his work, left me sitting there pensively. I realized I had left my mom for hours, so I rushed to my mom's room. My mom grumbled worryingly right after seeing my face. Where have you been? I was worrying sick helplessly here for hours here? I didn't tell her about the morgue and the ghost. I just explained that the grocery store had too many customers and then I had to assist a doctor with his patient. She picked on me, but I was not getting angry, I was very grateful for how lucky I was so far, I was having my family next to me all the time. Two days later, everything was over, I couldn't stand for the stuffy hospital room, so I'd like to walk outside. I have noticed there was a young man in a military uniform stepped into the fourth floor by stairway. He had a healthy body and tanned and was tearing out. He walked by me, hurriedly towards the end of the hallway, I guessed, that had to be Mr. Lee's son, he came to bring his father home. The Basement this is a true event happened to my family. I'm Emma, a single mom. I was living with my little son back then. He was a soon to be five years old that year. He was such an adorable child, named Jack. To save some money as well as to be near my workplace, I had decided to move to an old apartment. Then the relocation day came. I have packed my stuff from the van. Jack rushed up to our new apartment. Jack stay put honey, take it slow. This apartment had been built from a very long time, there was the only staircase to move up, no elevator. Jack stepped ahead of me and very excited with that new place. Mom. Open the door, it seems to be broken. We are new here, honey, we yet to know anything here, so you gotta listen to me, stay put, you hear me? I asked Jack carefully. Even though that was an old building but our apartment was still a very nice place to live. The building have been managed by an old couple. They have been so dedicated. Looked after everything in the building. They also usually admonished the people here for everyone safe. My son Jack, he was really mischievous and curious about everything. He had noticed there was a basement right after he stepped in here. Mom. There is a basement here. All right, I saw it honey, we gotta move quickly. I answered perfunctorily. There was a stair down to a dank basement at the building entrance. It made me uncomfortable, I was not sure there was anyone living there. I had noticed that Jack looked interested to that basement, he kept staring at the basement direction. So I reminded him. Honey, it looks dangerous under there, you should not go there by yourself, hear me? I had always an unspoken scary feeling about darks places like caves or basements. Probably, that was because I have nyctophobia or might be I just scared about terrible things inside the dark. We moved to the new apartment just like that, Jack and me gradually got used to that place. After a few days, Jack was able to hang out outside with the other kids around his age. That wasn't too big and there was always the manager's wife there, so I didn't have to worry much every time Jack went out. One day, Jack asked me, Mom. Might I go out for a while? 
I reminded him about dinner time. You shouldn't go too far out of the building. Tons of vehicles outside. You know. Just go downstairs a bit. Play at the yard then back for dinner. Promise me. I had been always sorry for Jack since I was unable to give him a full family with both father and mother as the other kids. So I barely stopped him from what he would love to do as long as it was not dangerous to him. After cooking the meal and set the table, Jack still didn't back home. I was a bit worried. I came down to the yard and looked around, know him. So I came to ask the manager's wife, "Have you seen my son around? I saw he has played around with a ball earlier right there, but he headed upstairs already. He had to be home." But I had not seen him on the way down. That made me panic. Then I hurried get back to our apartment to check out. At the entrance, I heard some child's giggles from the basement. Jack, is that you? That sounded so much like my son, so I called him aloud, but no one answered. To be sure, I pulled myself together and stepped down to the basement. Once entering the basement floor, I heard he talked to someone. Nanny, give me the ball. The lights got fuzzy and fuzzier. That made my heart miss a beat. I looked through the basement's corridor and called, "Jack, is that you?" Just answered me, "Honey." Once I saw Jack, I felt like my heart was able to get back to normal. I took a deep breath. "Jack, why don't you just answer me?" "Dinner time. Go home now." I stepped towards him and called him out loud. He didn't seem able to hear my voice until I came up close to him. He surprisingly asked, "Why do you get here?" I was a bit exacerbated since Jack didn't comply what I told him. "Why I am here?" "What I have told you. Remember, why you don't just hear me out and went down here. I'm here with Nanny," he explained. I looked around but no one there. I surprised Nanny who. I see no one. I was unable to stand in the basement any longer, so I rushed Jack. Let get home for dinner. I warned him about the basement again and again on the way back. During dinner, I have asked my son, "So you was at the basement with Nanny, an old lady you meant?" "Yes, Mom. She lives in the basement. She invited me to her place," he assured. "We have been just living there for a short time." But I know there are not too many people there. I have never seen the basement lady before around. I would like to ask after her. I might meet her later. How does she look like? She is very kind to me. She is not tall, chubby, and bear a smile all the time on her face. He described. There is a hole in her forehead. That is really weird. Do you think so? Jack added. I have tried to remember. Did I see any old lady like that? But there was nothing I could recall. Then I have stopped to think of that until another day. I had finished my work and got into the building. The manager's wife waved at me. Jack's mother, you're back. By the way, pardon, Auntie, is there an old lady living in our basement? She was bedazzled a bit, then replied, "Yes, there was. Why you ask?" I told her about what happened. Ah, the other day. Jack came downstairs and didn't back on time for dinner because he went with that lady to the basement. So I just asked. No worries. The manager's wife signed slightly and started. You should prepare for what I'm gonna tell you. She told me there was indeed an old lady named Amelia lived under the basement. Her son and daughter-in-law had been passed away due to car accident a few years ago, unfortunately. They left her with their little baby. The two of them had relied to each other's, but bad luck had come to her another time. Another car accident had taken Amelia's nephew away, so there was only her left in this world all alone. She decided to rent the basement at our building to live. She barely talked to another. She usually sat on that bench. She always looked like devastated, something on her mind. Sometimes she smiled. Sometimes she cried poorly, especially when she saw a young couple with their baby walk by. She would give her eyes on them until they went far away. I sympathized deeply for Auntie Amelia. She was really a poor old lady. If she was a loner, 
I would let Jack come visit her more often to comfort her. But the manager's wife gave me a shock detail. She had passed away not long later as well. What? She passed away. I was a bit terrified. She passed away because of an accident a year ago. She felt down the staircase and unable to be out of the wood. Her forehead got stabbed accidentally by the sharp corner that was in fall. People lives here had donated to bury her properly. I put everything together and got scared if she passed away a year ago. So who my son had hanged out with? So that her soul? The one my son met earlier, she is still here. The manager's wife comforted me by explaining. That is gonna be okay eventually, she loved children. Not only Jack could see her. Most of the children live here too. All you should do now is come down to the basement. Burn her some joss papers, incense sticks, leave her some fruits and beg her to not harm Jack in the future. I was unable to just stay still, I gotta do something. I bought some Joss papers, fruits and came down to the basement. Honestly, I got more scare about the basement after hearing the whole things. But I had to do that, I would do everything to my son. I didn't know why but when entering the basement floor, I felt a cold breeze flew by. I heard echoes for each of my every footsteps clearly. I had tried to grind my teeth to calm down while stepping down and found her room. I put the whole things in front of the door. I started to burn the Joss papers. I mumbled like I was talking to Amelia, and I believed she could hear all of that. Auntie Amelia, I know you love children. My little Jack is still very small. Please don't scare or hurt him. Please leave him to live a happy life, and don't come to see him. Right after I finished it, another breeze flew by and brought the dusk of the Joss papers along. All the dusk flew all around the basement with the breeze. In the dark of the basement, besides, there was dusk from which I had burned the Joss papers, I had seen an old lady stood nearby. Then she swiftly disappeared. I had cleaned thing up and left the basement, I looked back, the left Joss papers have still kept burned in the brass for a while, irrationally. I was pretty sure there was no breeze to blow the fire up. I thought that was Auntie Amelia. After that, everything got back to normal to me and my little son. The basement had been become a forbidden children's zone, and fortunately, Jack had not mentioned to the basement lady anymore. Ignis Fatus In a dark moonless night, while I was in my long vacation due to the pandemic, my brother have started narrating me a thrilling story about his high school. That school was way far from my neighbors, back then we had no high schools nearby, only primary schools. My big brother had a lot of childhood friends next door. Most of parents in my hometown had tended to send their children to that high school, a prestigious school which attracted a lot of talented kids from hundred miles away. So, the school administration had built a spacious dormitory so that kids could stay in to focus to their study. The idea of being free and stay away from home was a must-try experience to my brother. He had insisted my parent to move in and they had been convinced after a few days. He had been so much exciting right after he entered the room. Even after a long 40 minutes drive, such a big place here, look at the outside, he talked out loud. There were three more kids as his roommates, they all were from a far s province two hours drive from there. The dormitory was just finished by that year, it was right at the bottom of the mountain. Once the windows was opened, they had breath taken by a huge and picturesque view of mountains and forests. There was a very strict rule in the dormitory, at 9 p.m., lights had to be all turned off. One night, it was nearly the curfew, one of my brothers' roommates still was at his study desk and tried to finish his homework. Hey Steve, curfew time, don't you go to bed? Steve was the most hard-working student among them. You guys go ahead, I have prepared my flashlight here, I'll reading a little more. 
After all of the lights had turned off, Steve has drowned to the night's silence with his book. But all of sudden, my brother and the two others had been awakened by Steve's voice. Guys, wake up. You gotta see this, there was something outside the window. What's wrong with you, asshole? You know what time is it? Why too loud? They were wondering why Steve was making that noise in the middle of the night while opening the windows. Steve had pointed out of the windows to show them something. The three guys had come towards the windows and thrown their eyes outside. They all had jar dropped unspeakably because some mysterious blue flames were fading in and out in the forest nearby in front of their very eyes. What the hell is that? One of them too surprised to examine what was he watching. That's ghost fire as no as Ignis Fatus. Don't you know that? My brother confidently answered. He have been growing with digging too much of those kind of spiritual, mysterious stories so he was a professional compared to his roommates. Why there are so much a blue flame? They were worrying chat. I heard there were lots of death bodies had been buried in that forest long time ago. One of them once heard from his homeroom teacher. Many people had seen those blue flames in dark night. Don't tell me this dorm had been built in the surface of a cemetery. We probably were being gauche haunting. Calm down. There had been a sacrifice of somethings in the past. My brother comforted them. Even though the fear were eating them, they all had decided to close the window and ended up go to bed since it was pretty late. The next day, they had come to class and once again talked about what they had seen earlier to the other classmates. Our room is way more creepier, a guy spoke up. He said that his roommates have heard whispers and treads at midnight. Are you overeating? I'm telling the truth. I swear. Don't you guys see the strange last night? My brother was a bit confused but deep down he was still thinking about the blue flames the night before. After classes that day, the four of them sneaked out to check out the forest. They wanted to check out whether countless of tombs has been built there by their own eyes. Look, are these bone? Mike, one of them had found some white pieces of bone and called the others. There were countless of white pieces of bones on the ground all over that place, which were likely to be from human. Here too, and here as well. The four of them suspected that those pieces of bone have been found from the dorm area at the time it has been built and tossed to the forest as the result probably. The more they thought of it the more they have been scared. We gotta head back, Steve left first and seemed a bit paled. Wait for us. The four have rushed to get back as soon as possible, that was too scary for them. Accidentally, Steve had tripped and subsided in front of them. Steve, what is happening? Steve's body had more and more sink down, they had screamed and run towards him. They had dragged Steve out of the hole. Right after Steve had been rescued, his legs had backed on the ground, he had cried whining. Steve had found out he got a skull in his leg, how scary. He had immobilized, quivering and totally collapsed. What the hell? Why on earth is such a deep hole here? Mike said, his voice was way too shaking. Might be there was a grave in the past there. Or had been buried somethings and dug out already. Steve just too hurried to see it and got trapped in, my brother suspected calmly. The group of four hurried back to the dorm, they climbed over the gate and got back their room silently. That night, they went to bed earlier than usual. They had no guts to play cards. Steve hadn't wanted to study or read late neither. Daniel, wake up. While being deeply asleep, Mike's voice had wakened my brother. The others had been awakened as well. My brother had a bit annoyed. What? Suddenly, the silence of the night had been broken. There were whispers and footsteps outside. He had recalled and pulled his classmate's story in the morning up. Daniel. You are the bravest here, open the window and check it out, my brother's roommates had hastened him. He had frightened to death, but with the thought he was the bravest, he had decided to try. 
He had nearly screamed aloud after he pulled the window curtain. He could see there were at least five people roaming very nearby, but it would be hard to reveal surely whether they are human, they were too blurry to be sure. My brother ran back to his bed without a word and the four had pulled their blankets cover their heads to get over the night. A few days later, some students had reported this incident to the dorm's administration. As a result of that, the officers had bring an old watchdog and tied him at the dorm's gate to guard them. Guys, what happened to that watchdog? He keeps non-stop barking. I heard that dog is able to see those spiritual things. That dog is a real deal, he's immobilized all day, but raised his bark all night, how we can sleep. Hey Daniel, come with me to see what happened to the dog, please. Mike insisted my brother. They'd straight up, came to the windows and pulled the curtain. They were seeing the watchdog were barking in pain, struggling with so much Ignis Fatus around. He were barking more and more aloud. Those ghost fires had surrounded the watchdog a while before flying back to the forest behind the dorm's gate. The watchdog still kept barking afterwards, such a noise, but they had been comforted a bit. A week later, at midnight, my brother listened a door sound, there were likely someone pushed the door and stepped out, he had vaguely thought that someone had to go to the toilet, so he just returned to sleep. Where is Steve? Why he awake that early today? No ideas, I haven't seen him since I woke up. They had all no ideas where could Steve be that morning. His clothes are here, how he went out without getting dressed. They were wondering shortly, Steve's clothes were still in his bed. My brother recalled what happened last night suddenly. They all dressed up and hurried to the dorm's public toilet. What wrong? My brother have asked when he saw a guy who was standing in front of the toilet and staring inside. Such a right time. Your roommate has fainted inside, he replied, there were a crowd gathered. They had tried to come over the crowd, and seen Steve has propped up against the wall faintly. The other kids were trying to stir him up. He had still no response afterwards. His roommates had bring him to the dorm's medical center. After diagnostic, they had been notified that Steve had no serious health issues, he just too scared and blacked out. A while later, Steve finally opened his eye. His roommates asked what had happened, Steve have started to tell with a puzzled face. I have seen ghost with my own eye. Last night, he wanted to use the public toilet while everyone were sleeping, it was so dark. He stepped out of the room and hit someone in the toilet. He would like to say sorry. But when he gazed up, he faced up, it, he had seen an unforgettable, rotten face so clearly with an extremely tall body in front of him. Steve have frightened badly and backed up, but lost his balance and fell down unspeakably. He felt that he hit the wall probably and then wake up in the medical center. After that, Steve had quit school and back to his hometown, my brother also thought of backing home, but the other's two roommates had convinced him to stay. The night later, while my brother was sleeping, once again he had been awakened by the watchdog. This time, there were not only intensely barking, also weirdly whimpering. The watchdog kept barking and groaning for a while so they had to come to the window and pull the curtain. The watchdog was surrounded by so much of Ignis Fatus. Those were more and more attacking to the dog, but from afar they were unable to see what happened clearly. Seemed like the watchdog has fought back and whimpered more and more badly. Finally, the watchdog had laid up with his four legs uplifted. They were watching the watchdog were dying. One of them asked, what the hell just happened? No one answered. No one moved out of their beds, they have let the lights on regardless the curfew and stayed up all night. In the next morning, an officer had come to check why the watchdog had died. The three in the room had been in panic since they have been eyewitnesses how the watchdog died the night before. After careful checks, the dorm's administration had couldn't find out the reason of the watchdog death. 
There were no injuries in his body. Some kids reported that they had heard the watchdog's barks aloud, but had no guts to check outside in the dark. Some kids couldn't hear anything. My brother and his roommates had reported what they had seen honestly. After then, my brother moved back home. Afar living students had rather chosen to rent houses from the neighborhood than lived in the dorm's property. Day after day, there were no one left and the dorm had been closed forever. A few years later, I had a chance to walk by that dorm. It had been abandoned for years so it looked murky. I have heard one again the story about Ignis Fatus from the local. The coincidence. My father had been diagnosed with liver cancer when he was 57 years old, so he had to hospitalize. Me and my mom was being at the hospital alternately, and right at that hospital I had seen a formidable unforgettably event. Dad. How are you today? My siblings have been moved to other cities to make a living, so there have been only me and my mom here. I had to go to work in daytime, so my mom had to stay in the hospital most of the time. I'm feeling better, son, you backed from work? I usually ask the doctor about how healthy my father was, he likely was not in the good health condition. He had been lost tons of weights, but luckily, he was very positive so far. I bring you food, you and mom should better eat now, it is still warm. I had done my work early that day, so backed home and made some food to bring them. Hospital meals weren't their liking. Mom, I don't have any shift tomorrow, I'll stay over tonight, you should go home, you're so exhausted. My mom had been stayed up here for days, she looked unhealthy at all. Your dad is not that serious to have an eye on him over all night you know. Get sleep if you need to. I know, thank mom. I assured my mom but I didn't think I could sleep that night. I'll back tomorrow, I left you some food and rice on the table in case you hungry, honey. I didn't think I was gonna hungry, since I have been stuffed earlier. My mom is always such that sweet. Happiness International Hospital. My mom was aware that I was a workaholic. She was so much afraid I would spoiled everything up at work if I stayed in the hospital. So that night was my first overnight there. At midnight, my dad felt asleep while I was talking to him. The herbal medicine spot had run out. So I had pressed the emergency bell to call for nurses. While waiting the nurse to come fill in the spot, I was using the phone to kill time. The nurse had come and left after giving me a few advices. Afterwards, I had checked the time from my phone. It was over midnight, I didn't think it was such that late. My dad had felt in sleep thanks to the medicine. I have needed to go to the restroom nearby and thought I would get back real quick. I realized there was a difference between daytime and nighttime here. The hallway was more crowded during daytime, but at night I felt like there was something wrong with it. This might be a result of the dim lights above me, made me a bit horrible. After a few steps in the silence hallway, I was so uncomfortable. I only have heard my footsteps. The weather was not good that night as well. It was cold so I felt a bit freezing. I was not a grave guy honestly, in that atmosphere, I have started to paranoid, that made me more and more terrifying. My heart have bounced faster and faster as I felt something behind my back. Then a shadow has appeared in front of me thanks to the dim light. I had nearly got a shit out of me, I had not heard any sounds before except my footsteps but there was someone's shadow then. Accidentally, someone passed by me and went by ahead. At my first glance, that was an old normal patient in front of me, such a relief. But after I have glinted my eye, I realized there was something very strange at the old patient. I swiftly stopped to walk, the old patient has stopped as well. I believed when he walked, there was no sounds. I put everything together, and was very sure there was something wrong, I had my eyes down to check his legs. Once my eye caught his legs, I was frightened badly, 
I have never seen that before. He wore no shoes, and his toes was not in the ground. His body was hanging in the air, my heart nearly missed a beat. Dad. It was terrifying in front of me, I was immobilized unspeakably, and hearing someone was screaming from afar. My heart was beating faster and faster. Dad. Dad. A shaking crying voice must have been from somewhere behind me. I was misfocused to the old man appearance. After a few seconds, I settled down and looked towards the man again, he have disappeared, mysteriously. I reassured that was just someone who had needed to go to the bathroom like me. I was just too tired and dazzled. The crying voice was still there, so I decided to check out what happened to him curiously. The voice led me to a room. I carefully put a hand to the latch and slowly throw eyes in through the pain. Dad, you gotta wake up, please. The man who was laying down in the sick bed likely was dead, his family was mourning him. I was a bit heartbroken and thought about my dad, eventually, he had a liver cancer and would pass away sooner or later. I didn't want to see that anymore, and tended to left, eventually, my eye gazed over the death body's face, that was the old man I have faced at the hallway earlier, I was unable to move anymore. I came right up to the window to make sure whether I was too bedazzled to mistake him with someone. I 100% sure that was the one who scared me out at the hallway earlier. So he was a dead man. I didn't want to think of it anymore nor continued to go to the restroom. I backed to my dad's room hurriedly, then smoked to calm down. After that scary night, me and my mother still came to the hospital as normal. I didn't tell anyone about that, eventually my dad passed away a half year later, he was not out of the woods. At the day my dad left this world, I have tried to go to bed very early, since I had so much things to worry about at his funeral the day after. While sleeping, I got a little headache then I fuzzily opened my eyes. I recognized my dad was holding a black umbrella and standing in front of me, there was a totally strange woman to me stand right next to him without a word. He came closer to my bed and talked something to me, sort of I have to take a good care of myself and my mom, then left with the strange woman. The next morning, I woke up and got a heavy headache, I thought there was such a bad dream, did I miss him that bad? The only thing stuck in my mind was about the woman, who was she? and why she came along. That was just a dream and I decided to set it aside, then did some morning routine and came to the funeral home. Steve's obituary. Our big family has had a rule from very long time ago. If there is someone passes away, we will celebrate in the funeral home so that our relatives and friends could come and share the grief. Mom, don't be so mourning. Dad is gonna unhappy to see you like this. My mom was all alone from that moment, I felt like she was ages older than her age after just one night, even though I was not good at communication, I had to help her on greeting to our relatives and friends at the funeral. Poor you, you gotta take care of yourself, there was not only our relatives, there were my father's close friends had come. Our close relatives repeatedly comforted my mom, don't so shabby, your husband got a unable to, liberating. In the future, we wish we could help you and your son, keep in touch, please. My cell phone was ringing suddenly. Where are you? My cousin was calling me out, he was living and working in the States, he had flown back immediately once he had heard about what happened to my dad, he seemed to land a half hour ago and rushed to be here from the airport, he was finding where I was in this large funeral home. Mom, Luan is here but he couldn't find where we are, I'll go find him, could you hold on here for a while? I'll be back real quick. No worries. I'll take care from here. I said bye politely to some of my dad's friends there and ran out. There were some other funerals that day, so he must have been somewhere at the other lobbies. Hey Luan. Over here. 
Rationally, I found him in another lobby. He might be here for the last 10 minutes. He looked exhausted. Why you don't just stand at the gate? How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. We was childhood friends, but barely met up each other after he have graduated. This was not a good time to see your old friend. I blamed him about not keep in touch, but deep down, I was caring for him. What a large place. Why these areas are so similar, so confusing, he was complaining while standing at another funeral. We gotta move, my mom just a few steps from here. I explained a bit to him about the funeral home then I suddenly immobilized. Suddenly, I saw something very familiar fearfully, it was strange. What wrong? My cousin has sensed my fear. I was so dazed for seconds and he asked me out. That woman. I saw her in my dream last night. I pointed towards the portrait next to the coffin. That was her, I'm 100% certain of it. She had been next to my father in my dream. Such a coincidence. I told him about my dream, he also thought it was weird. We should head back now, we shouldn't let your mom there all alone, you mom must worry sick. Me and my cousin had consented silently to let the dream flew by, and stop talking about it. They were died at the same day so they just walked to the heaven together probably that night. The Truth this is a true story which I have eyewitnessed, it had happened when I was working at a factory in Sun Dong. That morning, when I started to kick off my working day which I got used to very well, there was no difficulties as my first days. Suddenly, our leader Kevin came and asked after my roommate, Hey! Have Steve came for work? I haven't seen him yet. He had asked me out since he knew Steve and I were sharing a dorm room. I remembered that Steve went to his friend's birthday party, yesterday, then he backed wasted at 2 in the morning, he might too wasted and still was sleeping. I'm so unsure, he have attended a birthday party and have been overdrunk, he is not awakened yet, I guess, I have left without checking on him. While me and Kevin were chatting, one of our co-workers, Simon rushed to us and let us know a piece of formidable news. Guys. You know what, Steve, Steve. Steve had jumped from the third floor of our dormitory. This was terrified us badly. Me and Kevin hurried to go to the scene of the accident. Steve had been in the way to the hospital by the ambulance. We hurried to go to the hospital then. Luckily, our dorm was a three floors apartment, so it was not that high. Moreover, while Steve had jumped from the, the third floor, he had been stuck in a branch of a tree before he landed to the ground, so he just got scratched over his body and his life had been saved. I had asked him worriedly, what happened Steve, how did you do that? Kevin had also added, everything is able to be sorted out, why you ended up with that stupid solution? The doctor notified us Steve has outed out the woods, but he needed to be hospitalized a few days to keep track. Then Steve was totally awakened, seeing me and Kevin, he had tried to nod his head to say hi to us. Kevin was calmed down after seeing Steve was getting better, started to bombard him with questions, why did you decide to suicide? If there is any difficulty, you gotta tell us, we will sort it out together. Steve had started to be scared, he was quivering and explaining, Kevin, I was not trying to suicide. There was something. Demons, demons pushed me off the rooftop. Steve told us the whole truth. The night before, the night he had took part in his friend's party, he had so much fun and drunk until everyone left. As usual, Steve got home by bus, but it was pretty late, he didn't want to take a cab, so he walked home. Since that place was pretty near by our dorm, a little walk would help to sober him up as well as saved him a little of money. There was a working area in the middle of the way home with a sign, under construction. But he hadn't noticed since he was really drunk, so he had hit the sign. Steve had felt down painfully in the ground, 
He got exacerbated and tried to stand up. Once he could see what was in front of him, he had startled sweatily. There was a very big hole ahead. He would fall down to that hole if he was not careful, and if he fell down, he would live a disability life or even die. He had stared at the big hole and got angry. Who the hell have dug this big hole? I nearly end my life here, you know, he cursed. To release his anger, he had violently dragged the sign to that hole. And he felt much better after doing it. Right then, he had a wave of nausea. Steve quickly ran toward a wall corner and started vomiting. He had heard a motorcycle sound coming. Surprisingly, he had stood up and seen the motorcycle ride by. He wanted to yell to let them know about the hole, but that was too late. The motorcycle had plunged down to the hole in front of him. He ran towards the hole in hurry. He looked down to the hole and was dumbfounded. A man and a woman had been plunged there unconsciously. They were likely to get severe injuries. They were bleeding badly. Steve had no ideas what to do, so he just left in terrifying. He backed to the room silently. Steve had hide out in his bed and tried to sleep, but he couldn't since he could see the death couple stands in front of him whenever he closed his eyes. In the early morning, when all of his co-workers had wake up and gone for their work, he was a little felt in sleep. But no longer later, he had felt that there was someone standing next to his bed. He had slightly opened his eyes to check out. That was the couple last night, they were died. The couple's bodies had been covered by blood, they had come to Steve closer and closer. He had so much frightened so that he have isolated himself at the bed corner. Suddenly, the man got to be angrier and closer to him. Steve had dodged his attacks, so he kept attacking from the above. The women were guarding the door, so Steve was unable to escape by the main door. The only exist to him was the balcony at this point. Too frightened to think. He decided to escape by the balcony or he was gonna be killed by the demon couple. He ran towards the balcony. Steve looked down. This was the third floor. The demons had chased after him to the balcony. They were encircled him with their creepy faces. The man got closer and pushed Steve down. That was too late to defend. Steve had lost his balance and fell down. While felling down, he was still keeping an eye on them. He could clearly see that they were smiling satisfyingly. Steve thought he would be died, but luckily, there was a branch of three in the middle. That branch was his life savior, it was like a mattress, decelerated his fall. That was too shocked to Steve and he had felt to unconsciousness. He gazed up the balcony, the demon couple had disappeared. Me and Kevin had looked at each other and been wondering if what a drunk man said was true. If the whole thing were true, that would be a severe accident, there were a couple had died in the hole. Me and Kevin submitted a day off that day to figure it out. We had found to the place Steve had mentioned, there were indeed an accident and victims were also a couple. But, people said that there were no one died. They had just got some severe injuries so they had been brought to the hospital. To make it clear, me and Kevin had also found the way to the hospital where the couple have been taking their treatment. We found their hospital room easily. The nurses told us, the couple had been brought at the very right time, so their lives could be saved. At first, we tended to come here to clear the scene, but at that moment we were getting more confused. The couple have been alive for sure. So what about the demon couple Steve have talked about? 